Worldwide, hypertension is more prevalent in African Americans than it is in, in uh, Caucasians and other races and ethnicities. About two out of every f excuse me, about two out of every five uh, African Americans has hypertension. Uh, perhaps a little more common, uh, depending on where you live and where you um, uh, your socioeconomic status. So here in Detroit, where we have a lot of poverty and we have a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, external stressors on people's lives. Um, things that contribute to elevated blood pressure, it makes for a prevalence of hypertension that's probably a little bit higher than a national average, but perhaps more importantly than that is it makes it very hard for individuals who reside here to have the adequate means uh, to control their blood pressure. One thing that uh, people probably aren't aware of is uh, once they start taking hypertension medications or once their blood pressure starts to get under control, people generally feel a little worse. Your body has been used to a certain level of blood pressure and your body's adapted to it. As soon as you t start taking away that elevated blood pressure, your body responds and it says, I kind of like the way things were, even though it was not doing good things for me. I kind of like the way things were and I don't feel so good right now. And people will take that as um, a negative or an adverse consequence of their blood pressure medication, perhaps the medication specifically or just the concept or, or the bigger picture of blood pressure control. It's incumbent on physicians, healthcare providers, nurse practitioners, whoever you're working with, to explain that early on so that once people start to experience those symptoms, they don't take it as a negative. They actually say, oh, things are working the way they're supposed to. I was warned about this. I'll, I'll write it out. That's not to say that if you have any questions, you shouldn't re-engage a healthcare provider, but it's to say don't stop taking the medications if you experience things that are perhaps a little discomfortable, uh, uncomfortable to you or a little disconcerting. You always can go back to the person who prescribed the medication if you have an established relationship, which gets back to our point of, of really having a provider that you trust and someone you're going to be able to uh, go back to time and again and, and discuss these situations. So if your grandmother, your mother, and you have hypertension, but you all consume a high-fat, high-salt diet, is it a hereditary thing or is it the way your grandmother taught your mother who taught you how to cook? So those kind of things may seem hereditary, and in that way there's almost a cultural hereditary component in that it's not genetic, but it's, it's something that is a cultural mix that uh, sets you up to have a disease like hypertension. That said, uh, genetics does play an important part. Uh, prior studies have estimated that about a 20% of people's likelihood to develop hypertension may be related to, to genetics. But the thing with genetics is that they predispose you perhaps to develop hypertension, but sometimes they predispose in a way that you need other things there to initiate or activate that predisposition. So we talk a lot about something called salt sem sensitive hypertension, salt sensitive hypertension. And that is thought to uh, be an important component in African Americans related to their blood pressure. So salt sensitive hypertension means some people respond with a more vigorous or robust uh, elevation of blood pressure in response to a, a salt load. If you don't take an assault load and you are a salt sensitive hypertension, a hypertensive person, you don't develop hypertension to the same degree. So there are things you can do, again, in yourself, the choices you make uh, that can interact with your genetic predisposition and lead to you developing or not developing or controlling or not controlling uh, your elevated blood pressure. So I, I think genetics are an important thing, but it's not an inevitability. And I, I know <laughs> for a fact that, that people, even with a genetic predisposition towards hypertension, can avoid uh, having uncontrolled hypertension by, again, the choices they make and the interactions with their providers and, and really recognizing what their role is in their own health care. It's, it's not a destiny. It's only a piece. You are an active participant in your own health care. You can make a difference. And not only can you, you should want to make a difference. You should want to do the things that you can do to effectively improve your blood pressure control. In certain circumstances, you might even be able to get off of medication if you're on it now by losing weight, stopping smoking, eating a more healthful diet, and cutting down on sodium. But I think a lot of this, we, we bargain with ourselves all the time. And I think it's, it's really important to understand what you are willing and able to do and make a commitment to do those things. And I think lastly, don't look at being on medication as an indictment of you as an individual, as a patient, as anything. Look at it as a way for you to maintain wellness. Being on blood pressure medication doesn't mean you're sick. It means we're trying to prevent the consequences of your hypertension. So if you don't have heart failure, you don't have kidney failure, you haven't suffered a stroke, 
that's great. And let's prevent those by taking your medications. And please, speak to your doctor if you're unhappy with your medication choice. And don't just be an innocent bystander. Ask questions and work with your physician.